Okay. Hi, those of you who have joined so far. I see there are four. I think there are an additional five more registered, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks so much for joining. And um, I think this will take about 30 minutes. Um, it'll probably take me about 10, 15 minutes to go over information about the program and then uh, maybe another 15 minutes to go over your questions. Um, but I've scheduled this to go on till one in case there are a lot of questions and a lot of detail that we need to go into, especially um, related to the application. Um, just a couple of things about uh, this webinar space specifically. Um, there's a chat function if you want to, um, you know, make uh, sort, of, sort of dynamic um, contributions to the discussion. Um, or if you want to let me know that there are problems with the sounds or with the video or anything like that. Um, there are also the options to um, enter uh, questions. Um, you should see that at the bottom of the screen. And um, that is where you can now um, begin to insert any questions you might have um, that you um, may have already encountered as you um, hopefully reviewed some of the um, informational materials available at the website. But in case you haven't actually visited the website yet, I'm going to assume um, that um, everyone does not know um, much about the program, but that you're interested because you are um, in that phase in your dissertation path that um, you're developing your proposal uh, and um, aim to defend your proposal sometime in the next academic year. Um, so in the fall or the spring of 2018. Okay, so um, to guide this informational um, webinar, I'm actually gonna be referring to two documents that are downloadable now um, on the website. And actually, um, let me share a screen with you um, for where you can find the application materials and all of that. So, okay. Okay, so um, you should be able to see now, this is the web page that we have that's um, linked to the graduate studies page. And um, this page will be updated regularly with any new information about um, the application process. But right now it has some general information about the program itself and then um, some materials that you can download. Um, I'm going to be going over this program information sheet, and then I'm also going to be going over the application itself. Um, and then please also note that you can submit, or I should say, you have to submit the application through this web page as well, but I'll go over that um, shortly. Okay, so let's, um, let me then go to the, um, there we go, the informational sheet. Okay, so this is a re actually a very exciting new initiative that we have going at UMass Boston. Um, it's a three-year program um, in terms of its sponsorship by the Social Science Research Council, and we are in the first year. Um, and so those of you who are lucky enough to be at the proposal development stage and can take advantage of this particular opportunity, um, it's, it's really exciting, and so we're very happy that we're able to support students in this way through um, SSRC's uh, funding. And so the idea behind this, I don't know, um, perhaps some of you are already familiar with the Social Science Research Council dissertation um, proposal development fellowships. Um, well, in, for the past um, several years, SSRC has um, funded um, graduate stu students to attend um, a series of workshops um, to develop their dissertation proposals. And the idea behind that is, is uh, well, there's two, two main ideas. Um, the overall kind of uh, goal of that is to help graduate students develop 
really excellent, really strong uh, proposals that they can then submit for funding. So um, it's uh, great to be able to develop proposals that your committees will be really happy with and that will provide a real clear path for your own dissertation. But really, um, you know, a key goal of this is to um, broaden students' um, ideas about what's possible um, in terms of gaining funding for their dissertations. And um, there are a range of um, resources out there, including uh, from the SSRC. And of course, there are, um, depending what field you're interested in, there are other um, fellowships and grants that um, students can apply for, including the National Science Foundation Dissertation Improvement Grant, um, fellowships at um, the National Institutes of Health, um, resources in um, throughout the humanities, including the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, uh, and, uh, and so all of these very competitive uh, funding sources require really strong um, dissertation proposals. And what's been the case at UMass Boston is that generally um, students, um, at least in my experience in mentoring graduate students, don't necessarily see um, putting together fundable proposals as a, an attainable sort of desirable goal. I think most students are accustomed to developing the proposals for the purpose of meeting the requirements of their committees and for defending them and then getting ready to go out and collect the dissertation data and so on. And I think there may be, um, some hesitance or intimidation or just a generally the idea that um, funding might not be necessary. And so um, some of our students might not be aiming as high as they could be. Um, and I think it's really critical for um, students at UMass Boston to rethink this um, generally because um, we have very busy students with very complex lives. Many of them, some of them have children. Many of you work full time. Um, and having funding and having a bit of support around your dissertation research um, can oftentimes mean the difference between, for some students, finishing their dissertation at all. For many students, it could shorten the amount of time that they spend um, in developing, their, in collecting data and analyzing and writing up their dissertation. So um, we really see this opportunity as a way to help our students um, succeed um, in terms of their the development of their dissertations, to graduate on time, and to put them in a really strong footing for when they go out into the job market, um, wherever they might be applying. Uh, but certainly, those of you who are interested in applying for academic positions, um, having um, evidence of successful funding can really enhance um, your profile when you're out there um, applying for professorships, but even you know in the non-profit profit or even private sector, grant writing and grant getting um, is a huge skill to be able to present. And so the idea behind um, receiving this kind of training, this kind of training, is that um, once you teach um, students how to write really strong proposals, it's a skill that they can take. Um, to many domains of the professional lives. Um, so that's the overall goal of this, um, this partnership. Another goal that SSRC has is, um, has to do with exposing um, students to interdisciplinary um, perspectives, um, having this be an opportunity for students in interaction with their peers um, and with uh, faculty members in different fields to learn more about different disciplines and think about how those disciplines may be able to inform and strengthen their dissertation proposals. Okay, I just wanna check in and make sure that there are no questions or glitches so far. Okay, so I'll go back to this. Okay, so, um, so interdisciplinarity, um, uh, or ex interdisciplinary exposure is another key aspect of this. Um, here at UMass Boston, um, in terms of the long-term life of this particular initiative, we are going to be emphasizing transdisciplinarity, and that's uh, the reasoning behind the, um, 
the name of the program here at UMass Boston. Um, this program is being offered at four other universities. Um, and so um, those include Northwestern University, Cornell University, um, UC Santa Cruz, and the University of Minnesota. So UMass Boston is one of the five universities that, um, that um, won the, the award to partner with SSRC to offer this. And each of those sister institutions have their own um, flavor or approach. Um, here at UMass Boston, we're focusing on transdisciplinarity and social justice, at least in the future years. Um, this year, for those of you who would be applying for this program um, should be able to articulate some interest in inter and transdisciplinarity, but because you would be receiving training more directly in the context of SSRC workshops, um, this will not be as much of an emphasis um, in this particular year. Um, but we can talk more about that. So the, the SSRC proven sort of format is that they have a spring workshop um, where um, students work from a workbook and um, you'll be, those of you who um, are accepted into the program this year will be receiving a workbook that you'll be using to start to develop components of your proposal and then you will bring those responses to the workshop. Um, so uh, this spring, the workshop will be in Pittsburgh and will take place uh, from June 7th through the 11th. Then students can apply for uh, up to $5,000 of funding to um, assist them in collecting exploratory data, exploratory evidence for their proposals. And um, these these uh, funds can be used for travel, they can use for living expenses. Um, if, for example, you were to travel out, um, out of the city or out of state or out of the country in order to um, get a better footing on what you might do for your dissertation. And um, they can be used to compensate participants. It can be used for many different um, sorts of things. Um, the main thing here is to emphasize that these funds are not for dissertation research itself. Um, and SSRC uh, emphasizes this quite a bit. And in fact, when um, in the past programs, the fellowship program that they have, um, they do look very closely to make sure that people are not using these funds to actually collect data that they're going to include in their dissertation. The idea behind um, this exploratory research uh, fund is to um, is that there are lots of things that need to be clarified um, as people are working on strengthening their proposals. Um, anything from um, where, you know which field site. Um, should I focus on? Or what archives or libraries um, uh, should I access? And, and what um, kinds of information did they have available? Or uh, what contacts should I develop? Um, um, or maybe they can be used to develop contacts that'll be critical when people are actually out there um, collecting data for their dissertation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it can be used to test new methods. Um, some, um, some of you might be thinking about um, using um, new methodological approaches or are unsure about what the best approaches might be. And so you might use this uh, exploratory research period and the funds to try out different things and, um, and see um, what works and what doesn't work and whether you need uh, further preparation and things like that. Um, and so um, the idea is that this, this exploratory research um, will feed into drafts of your proposal that then you will bring to your fall workshop. In the fall workshop, you'll be working with your peers to further refine your proposal and um, to also talk about and reflect the summer experience. And so that would take place in September 13th through the 17th in Minneapolis. So um, at this point, I do want to emphasize that application to this program means that you're committing to participating in both workshops. And um, the nice thing, of course, is that 
um, SSRC is covering all expenses related to participation in those workshops. Um, so travel expenses, um, food, and so on. Anything associated with um, getting to and from the workshops and actually participating in the workshops will be covered by SSRC, um, in addition, of course, to the summer research funds. <clears throat> okay. So um, I've gone over the workshop goals and the sum of exploratory research. I want to talk a bit more about the peer engagement aspect of it, because in addition to knowing that you would have to travel and commit to these five-day workshops, um, the, um, the, the workshop engagement, um, the, the sort of the design of these workshops is that um, students who participate are really engaging with their peers. So peers at UMass Boston from our group that will be selected, but also peers from the sister institutions that I mentioned before. So um, when we all meet um, at these workshops, you are going to be um, uh, give, providing feedback and um, insights and ideas and so on um, to your peers' uh, workbook responses and um, other sorts of drafts and things that, um, that will be shared with all the participants. And so it's, um, you're going to be learning about how to put together a strong proposal, but you're also going to be learning about how to provide constructive um, critique of others' um, dissertation proposal ideas and their methodologies, um, the literatures that they're engaging with, and, and so on and so forth. So it's a very active and very engaged process um, that will um, require um, quite a bit of commitment um, in terms of time and effort um, from you all, of course, um, you know, in order to really strengthen your skills in, the, in proposal development, <clears throat> excuse me, and also in, um, in order to um, help you get a, a really good handle on what your proposal is going to be like and what methods you're going to be using and, and uh, what questions, you know, have your questions be really refined, um, really clear and really strong that you're um, engaging with the literature and um, in, inter or transdisciplinary literatures and so on. So um, all of these things will require commitment um, and effort. <clears throat> so it is not a passive sort of workshop experience um, at all. So um, that means that you're going to have some assignments to complete um, as part of your um, experience in this. Um, to prepare for the spring workshop, um, you'll have to complete the assignments by the first week of June so that you can be ready to engage uh, fully in the workshop experience in June. And um, as I said before, this involves putting um, completing a workbook that would be provided to all students. And this workbook has been designed to walk th students through different components of the proposal development process and have them really think very carefully about all of these different things, like your research questions, your methods, your, um, y your approaches, um, y uh, issues of actual design, you know, how you will carry out um, the, the research, you know, potential applications and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me come back to the webinar space to see if there are some questions. Okay, so there are a couple questions and I'll just take a quick break here to, um, to answer um, these questions. So the first question is for how long are participants expected to be in the research site this summer? And um, it is up to the student to um, specify how long they need. So there are no expectations that you would um, spend any a period of time. Um, it could be as short as a week or it could be the whole entire summer. Um, different disciplines, um, require uh, different lengths of time of engagement in field site. I'm an anthropologist and in anthropology is not unusual for um, dissertation students to do exploratory research over the course of um, a month or two or even three if they have the whole summer. 
um, because they're traveling abroad oftentimes, they're really having to get to know the field site more intimately. Um, they're preparing for what is oftentimes year-long dissertation research. Um, so, so you have sort of that going on at one end, and then the other end, there may be folks who are doing research locally, like at the Boston Public Schools, for example, um, and can fit this into their regular schedule. And so, um, or may be able to kind of determine what they need or kind of um, what contacts and, and things um, in a relatively short period of time. So you um, would have to make that clear in the application. Um, that you will be submitting uh, by March 20th. Um, and you can justify any length of time. The second question, um, okay. Could the funding be used for stats camps or training? Now this is a really um, good question that, has, that came up for us as we were receiving training ourselves from SSRC about this process. And there are a couple things about this. So. Keep in mind that um, in the uh, fall workshop, so in September, after the summer exploratory research period, much of the discussion will be about what students discovered um, in, the, um, in their summer exper exploratory experience. So those students who um, spend some or all of their time receiving additional training um, will um, find that you know, those discussions are gonna be more difficult um, because there will be other students um, uh, either from our own campus or from the sister campuses who will have done summer research. And, um, and so therefore that will make that part of the discussion a bit more difficult for students who focus on training. Um, so the idea is not to use the funds to receive um, additional methodological training, however, um, we did acknowledge that in some cases um, there are certain kinds of training that students might need in order to know how to better describe um, and uh, situate certain methods in their proposal themselves. And so I'll give you an example of this from doctoral students um, that I've had discussions with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, so I do research in social network analysis, and social network analysis has a, a broad applications to um, many different projects, and students are drawn to social network analysis um, because of its potential, but it is methodologically in intensive, and some of it is uh, very quantitative, some of it is not. But either way, um, sometimes for some students, I advise them to receive additional training in order for them to better know um, what aspects of these methodologies they want to incorporate into the proposal. So there may be some examples in which, um, especially with sort of innovative methods, some additional training could be justified. But I wouldn't recommend that that be the entirety of the summer experience because um, of what I said earlier, it'll just make it, um, you know, it'll it, that student will um, will not be able to maximize the discussion around exploratory research um, in in the September workshops. Okay. Um, the other question. Just wanted to clarify two things. Will there be new cohorts of dissertations accepted over the next three years? Um, in other words, could we apply for this program next year versus this year? Okay. So I'll I'll um, answer that question first. Um, <clears throat> there will be new cohorts of dissertation, uh, doctoral students accepted um, over the next three years. Um, however, the, um, the, the idea is to establish a doctoral dissertation development program at UMass Boston, beginning with the first year of more intensive engagement with the SSRC. So what that means is that those of you who are able to apply this year will benefit from the um, SSRC workshops and um, travel that um, other SSRC fellows benefit from when they apply to their regular SSRC dissertation development program. Um, and so the workshops and that $5,000 of summer funding is this year only. 
in the second, third, fourth, fifth, if we're fortunate enough to establish this program, um, sadly, UMass Boston will take on a UMass Boston kind of, it, it will be completely administered by UMass Boston and will feature on-campus training. Um, and so in the second and third years, that on-campus training, so instead of the workshops, it'll be a year-long, 15-week, um, so basically bi-weekly um, dissertation um, proposal um, workshop and sort of it, uh, training that would be for uh, credit, so three credit, 15-week, year-long dissertation proposal development support. So that would be one option. There will, we will also be offering a boot camp in the summer, a three-week boot camp that um, students are able to, um, if they're not able to do the year-long activity, they can do the three-week intensive. Um, and we would also have funds available to students for exploratory research or for um, stipends um, related to living expenses so that they can um, participate in the boot camp. So, um, so yes, it will be different cohorts, but the nature of the experience will be very different. This is the only year where there will be the SSRC experience, and in subsequent years it'll be local, um, and it'll be a bit different. And there'll be more of the focus on the transdisciplinary and sort of social justice training aspect of it. Um, so the second part of your question was, um, due to the transdisciplinary nature of my research, I'm starting research early for my program. Oh, I will not be ready to defend my proposal um, until 2017, 2018. Um, so we'll be taking comps in the spring. Does that mean I am unable to apply this year? Um, no, um, you, you can still choose to apply, and we will definitely accept your application because I think that... Um, you know, if you're um, thinking early and you're thinking very deliberately about, you know, all that might be involved in developing a really strong proposal, you might still be able to benefit from, um, from this experience. The students who are ready to, who are wanting and ready to defend in the fall of 2017 or in the spring of 2018 will receive priority. Um, but, um, we don't know yet what the applicant pool is going to be like, how much competition there will be. So um, there, there's, there's always a possibility that students who may be earlier in their trajectory can still benefit from and uh, participate in the program. So I, I don't want to discourage you from, from applying if you think that it will be beneficial for you at this stage. Uh, and especially given what I'm describing to you, the, the, the fact that in the second and third year, it's, it is going to look a bit different than what it looks like this year. Okay. Um, all right. So those were the questions so far. I'm going to um, let me switch over to the application itself. Oh, I see a couple of more questions in the chat area. Let's see. So um, Adriana, for how long are participants? Oh, so that's the same question as before. And then um, does the applicant have to be a PhD candidate and pass the comprehensive exams. No, um, you don't. Um, it's sort of related to the previous question. Um, technically, students can apply at any point um, pre-proposal defense, um, but, but priority would be given to students who are, who are in, a, in a position to benefit the most from the experience, um, and particularly those students who are ready, who will be ready to defend in the fall or in the spring. Um, of this coming academic year. Okay, so let me then um, move to the application itself. And uh, let's see, there we go. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, here is the application that you can download from our webpage. And um, this application is essentially the SSRC Dissertation Proposal Development Fellowship application, but we've modified it to be specific to the particular kind of interests that we have for this program at UMass Boston. Um, it's a fillable um, PDF 
so you can type your responses right into it and um, it should have space for all of the um, responses. <clears throat> Once you fill it out, you save it and then you will upload it um, on that web page. And I'll show you um, that once I've gone over the application. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, the first piece to, to look at here is that we're looking for people to be able to commit to attendance at those workshops. And uh, there's some general, some other general information about um, where you are um, in your PhD, um, any prior educational experience. <clears throat> Under relevant coursework, um, you you know this is not a space where you put in every all the courses you've taken. This is more of a space where you can highlight um, courses that you think speak to your preparation for um, developing your proposal. So any methodological courses, any theoretical courses, or interdisciplinary courses, and so on that um, that help us get a better um, picture of uh, where you are as a student and the kind of preparation you have and maybe what other preparation you might need. Um, and then the rest of the application is really focusing on different pieces of your of your um, project, of your idea, um, starting with the title and the abstract. Now the abstract is, is important um, that you take some good time to think of, to, to articulate it because that's the, the only piece that for the folks at SSRC are going to have, and that's the um, content that will be shared um, with other participants <clears throat> ahead of time. So other participants, you will have access to your workbook responses and things like that, but in terms of um, if, uh, information about your actual project that will come from the abstract and so um, it's it's meant to be brief uh, tight and to the point but um, it, this you know sufficiently descriptive and substantive so that other folks who are participating um, in this um, program in the sister universities and within UMass Boston will have a good idea of what your project is about okay so the next um, section is um, asking you to introduce your dissertation project for an academic reader who is unfamiliar with your particular topic um, and so on. So basically this is um, a, a space in which you describe the central research question, problem, puzzle, um, so on, that you want to investigate and that you talk about why it's important and timely. When we review your applications, we will be, um, um, one of the things that we evaluate um, will be uh, the sort of the significance or innovativeness of your project. Um, it's one of several other things that we'll be looking at, but it certainly will um, help us in, um, in, in getting a good sense of um, what it is that you hope to do in your proposal. And sometimes that can be tricky if you're early enough in your the, the development of your dissertation idea. Um, so um, it means that you, you should be taking between now and when you submit the applications by March 20th, um, putting some good thought into um, your, um, the, the, the set of questions um, or issues that you want to explore and what's significant and important about it. Um, it may be beneficial and, I, and we highly encourage you to be in dialogue with your advisors um, and other committee members as, as appropriate um, to help you in formulating these um, ideas for your proposal application. Um, all throughout, we will, we will be encouraging your advisors to be in the loop um, about um, participants' involvement in this project. <clears throat> the next um, section is about how you expect your dissertation project can draw on, draw from and contribute to existing literature in novel and, or interesting ways. So this here is a statement about the theoretical, theoretical significance of your um, project. Um, and um, it's, 
it's essentially a question about how you're engaging with existing literature you know, how your question, how your puzzle, your problem, and so on that you want to investigate springs from um, issues that are of interest and that are being engaged in by other people in your field or in fields that you're, um, that you are wanting to engage with. And um, so do include three or four um, references that have been important to you um, that have shaped your ideas about this project. You know, some existing studies, some seminal theories and so on that um, have been influential, have, have been important for you as you've uh, been brainstorming and thinking about what it is you want to study for your dissertation research. The next section is about um, the methods of investigation. <clears throat> and um, be, SSRC being a program, and certainly here at UMass Boston, this being an inter and transdisciplinary um, kind of initiative. Um, and at SSRC, um, they uh, fund both social, si social science and humanities um, research. Um, at UMass Boston, we do not have humanities PhDs, but um, some of you may be engaging with the humanities and may not use um, language like data um, uh, collection, for example, or may not be um, doing interviews, but at rather working with text and so on. So here is a space where you talk about all of these different um, methodological ideas, because um, this is, in many respects, is sort of the heart of your actual proposal when you describe how you're actually going to answer your research questions. Um, when you uh, elaborate on your design, much of it, it will be um, answering questions of what sources of information you're gonna access, um, how you're gonna collect um, data, how you're going to interpret and analyze any data that you collect, all of these sorts of things you're gonna have to think very thoughtfully about in order to put together a very strong dissertation proposal. And so um, this is, the, you know, an opportunity to articulate that, um, to begin to articulate that. And um, when you uh, work on the workbooks, um, if you were um, to be accepted into the program, you're going to be having to think more carefully about all of those methodological issues. Okay, the next section is um, for students to summarize as best as they can um, where you feel most confident in the progress you have made so far with your dissertation project. Um, this is an opportunity for, for you to make a case for why um, this year will be a particularly um, good year for you to engage in a program like this um, as you're um, working on your proposal. So, um, you know, um, demonstrate that you are ready, that you're far enough along to start to develop these um, dissertation proposal ideas, but also talk uh, frankly about those things that are still um, up for resolution and clarification and, and that therefore justify um, further refinement, further workshopping, um, uh, uh, engaging with faculty and students who provide feedback, doing exploratory research, all of these things. Um, so the idea is like, if you've already have a draft of a proposal that seems pretty solid, then this um, will not be a program for you. Um, so you shouldn't have everything clear and set um, uh, and feel like you need to put forward a project that's like <clears throat> well articulated and formulated because the whole purpose of this is to help you get there. <clears throat> and so you talk about that in this section here. Explain how you hope that your participation in this program is going to help you actually resolve these issues. Um, the next space is just a, some um, brief space for you to talk about other professional development skills and topics and so on that you hope to gain from participation in the program. So um, they, besides developing um, your the proposal for your dissertation, it includes things like actually gaining um, um, skills in proposal development that you can transfer um, to different aspects of your professional life, um, learning how to give feedback um, on um, you know, proposals and other pieces of writing um, 
and giving constructive and sort of substantive feedback to others. There are a range of different sorts of things that people can gain from this that it, uh, is beyond just um, your own dissertation topic. And so articulating that um, will be good. And then this next set of questions has to do with your summer research experience and how um, you will use your summer research funds. So, um, Again, just to clarify that the purpose of the summer research experience is not to collect um, data for your dissertation or to collect information for your dissertation, but to um, help clarify what you're going to do um, and so that you can articulate that very clearly in your proposal. And so here you want to talk about how you would use the summer research funds. Um, you know, in the next sections, you can specify how long you expect to be in the field. Um, and how much money you think um, that'll um, require. Um, and, you know, from travel expenses to kind of living expenses and, and things like that, um, research assistance, um, and so on. Um, this money would be essentially given to you directly, and um, you would have a lot of flexibility about how it would actually be um, expended. So the university would not be um, intervening in um, how you use your summer research funds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you, at any point as you're developing this application, you have questions about how to fill out this, um, you know, the start, the end date budget um, piece uh, and, you know, the breakdown of funds requested with the short descriptions, please don't hesitate to let me know or to let Andrea Leverance in sociology uh, no, or Loan Dao in um, Asian American Studies and the um, School for Social Inclusion and Go Global Development, uh, Global Inclusion and Social Development. So um, uh, all the three of us um, know quite a, a bit about the application process and can help you um, clarify some things if you still have any questions about these. Um, let's see. The other sets of questions are sort of um, self-explanatory sorts of things related to, um, you know, any additional info you can provide that will help those of us who will be reviewing the applications um, understand more about um, where you are, um, your preparation, your readiness for participation in this um, and for dissertation de uh, proposal development. Um, and uh, that's what these next, um, couple of sections are about. The applications will be reviewed by a committee of folks that have been involved with um, this initiative uh, from the beginning. So um, they include faculty members from um, a range of programs on campus, um, and it may include folks who are, um, you know, GPDs for your own programs or even advisors and so on. Um, and so, um, uh, so it will not just be reviewed by um, Andrea, Lo Loanne, and I, there will be a larger committee who will be reviewing all the applications. Okay, so let me go back to the webinar space, um, stop the screen share, and see what other questions come up. Okay, so new question is, um, this may sound silly, but do we have to strictly adhere to the word limit? Um, you, you know, it's, you know, the way that the fillable spaces are set up, it's not, um, it's not set up to be, um, it's not gonna tell you when you've reached 400 words. So um, I'm not sure, you know, um, basically what is, what's gonna happen is that you can go on and on and on and on, but um, uh, you know, we'll have to basically scroll through when we actually look at the application. Um, it, it'll make it difficult for us to print out the application because it will only print what's visible in the space provided. Um, but what that that shouldn't be something you worry about too much because we wouldn't be printing. We don't expect to be printing out these applications much, but actually rather uh, viewing them electronically. So you do have some space to go over the limit, but I wouldn't overdo it um, because we expect to be reviewing quite a few applications, and um, it's it will just prolong the whole process. Um, but you do have some wiggle room. The next question is, is this only available to students who are planning on using qualitative data for the dissertation? No, not, not at all. Um, it can, it, you know, there are no limits to the, um, 
methods and theories and approaches that students could, you know, it's up to you to um, articulate to us what it is that you expect to do or are envisioning to do for your dissertation proposal, I mean, for your dissertation um, research. And um, the whole, you know, the purpose of this experience is to help you refine um, what you want to do, but also think about, you sort of expand the possibilities for um, data collection, data analysis, and so on. So um, this being a transdisciplinary program in itself, um, we we don't adhere to any sort of um, strictures around qualitative versus quantitative, humanities versus social sciences um, kinds of distinctions. It's pretty open, um, and uh, so don't don't worry about that. Let me see if there are any other questions. Um, okay, I think um, I've covered um, what I wanted to cover. I'll give you another minute to think of some other questions you might have. Um, this um, webinar is being recorded, so I can um, certainly upload this video and make it accessible. Um, um, later on as well. Oh, I guess the, the last thing that I wanted to show you is um, the upload process, which is very straightforward. Um, okay, let me share the screen one more time. Okay. All right, so um, you'll be um, submitting the application, the, the PDF here. And basically what this is, is a Dropbox link that we've set up um, for you to um, find your file in your hard drive or wherever you have it, um, select it, and just um, directly upload it onto this. So um, it's a fairly straightforward, um, not very technical, you know, technically intensive way to, to submit these applications. Um, no one is, uh, but us who have access to the folder where this is going to is, is um, able to view your application. You won't be able to view anybody's application. This is just a portal for you to upload your, your PDF. Um, in addition, your advisor um, or your or any faculty member you've selected to submit a recommendation letter will do the same exact thing. We'll basically use the same portal to upload their reference um, uh, form. The reference letter form, um, we, you know, we've put together a set of questions to to help um, streamline this for the the advisors or the faculty members who would be providing references for you. Um, so it doesn't have to be a sort of traditional reference letter sort of thing. Um, and they're encouraged to really focus on these areas, um, these, these particular questions um, to assist us in evaluating the, the applications. Okay, so um, Crystal, you asked, you mentioned that committee members should be involved. What if we do not have a committee member? Um, that's okay. That's okay. I think um, the, the point would be is that if you do have um, a committee, if you do have advisors that you work closely with, that we want to make sure that they, um, they're not in the dark about um, your, your participation in the project, that they, um, that, you know, there aren't sort of developments and other things that happen with your dissertation proposal that they don't learn about in a timely way, these sorts of things. Um, oh, so you do have a chair, just not the members. Yeah, that's that's totally fine. If you have um, an advisor, committee chair, um, you know, we, 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 we just wanna make sure that there are channels of communication open. Um, we don't want to overwhelm your advisors with um, information about your progress or things like that. It's nothing of that sort. It's more, it's more to make sure that your advisors have a good sense of how things are developing for you and the sorts of things that you're learning. And so, so that it, it makes it possible for them to be more supportive um, of you as you develop your proposal. Okay. All right. The, I think the only other thing that I did not mention is that um, for the workshops, um, for the June and September workshops, um, we, the people who will be joining you will be um, myself, 
and Loan Dao. So um, the two of us are the faculty leads for the this initiative, and Andrea Leverens is the lead administrator, um, and she coordinates with SSRC on different sorts of things related to um, the funds um, and other logistics. Um, so general questions about the program can be directed to Andrea and her email address appears on the website. Um, but you will be working most closely with, um, with Loanne and me um, in developing your um, workbooks. Um, when we get to, the, to Pittsburgh, for example, um, some, there'll be several sessions where it'll just be the UMass Boston folks with us leading the discussion. And then some other sessions where you'll be um, with the uh, students in the other sister campuses and faculty members from their universities. Um, so you'll be spending quite a lot of time with um, Loan um, and me, um, you know, through the course of your participation in this. And so, um, I very much look forward to receiving your applications and to reading them and to hopefully even joining you um, in this program in June um, through to the, um, the September workshop. If you have any additional questions, you have my email address. Once you know, Hopefully you have it. Once you registered for this, it should have been provided to you, or at least you can reply back to um, the notifications that were sent by this webinar tool. Um, don't hesitate to call uh, to contact me with any additional questions you might have, and um, and good luck with the application. Take care, everyone.